Hey everybody, Joy here. It's Thursday, March 18, 2021. And yes, I do have my cup. It's right here, but I'm keeping it over there so I don't spill it on my pretty new fabric. We're going to talk borders. I'm going to start a border project. For those of you who have said, we don't know what to do with these border fabrics. So, the first thing you want to do is find a pattern where you can incorporate the border somehow. Okay? So, I watch Peggy Sagers all the time, all the time, all the time, as you know. I've had trouble with her patterns all the time, all the time, as you know. But I remember her having a couple of them that had a cow neck. And then some of them had like an extra piece in the front. So I got out my two Peggy boxes. For those of you who think I don't like Peggy, let's see how many patterns I have of Peggy Sagers. <laughs> Ones I haven't thrown away. Um, so I'm just going to look through them. By the way, the tea that I make all the time, I have two of these. The tea that I make all the time, it's like this one, but it's not this one. This is a different one. This is a very, very simple tee. It has a bust dart in it. It came out great. The armholes came out great. The sizing came out great. I love it very much. This is that pattern. It's this one right here. This one back here is a completely different denomination. It's made with pleated fabric and it has a different neck. So I don't do anything with it. I don't care for that one. But this one here, and see, Peggy's done what she always does. She's not showing you the pattern. The pattern is not for a dress. It's for a top. But she shows this lady wearing a dress. Yes, you can do that, but that pattern is not in this envelope. <laughs> this is what's in the envelope. See? That's what I mean. And does she tell you in here how to make a dress? No. She tells you how to make the top. So, you just have to get used to the way Peggy thinks. And what I'm looking for is something I could use to incorporate the border. Now, you could use it for this, maybe. It's not on the back cover, either. Do you see this right here? How the middle is pleated, and that's got all those beads on it. You could use a border in there. You would have to sew it. You would have to sew it. You'd have to cut down the center and sew it to each side, but you could use a border going down there. Yeah. That would be going down the center of you. Let me see. Now, here's another one of her patterns. And you can see that this has a separate sewn-in area up here on the top of that pattern. Look at the back. Do you see that piece right there? That piece right there, depending on how wide your border is, you could cut that piece out of the border. And then cut the rest of the garment out of the part that isn't the border. I think that would look really nice. Now look here. You say, why, why do you always complain about her pattern, Joy? Look at this. This is a pattern for pants. There's a purse hanging over the pants. There's a belt hanging down on the pants. And there's a wrap hanging over the pants. You cannot see those pants at all. Except from under her hip down. And they're black, so you have to look at the back to see what the pants really look like. So that is my frustration with her patterns, is I always think the pattern cover could have been done much better. Alright, looking for things to use for a border print. So now I have this box. These boxes are in order by number, so most of the blouses are in this box. So let's see what's in here that maybe we could use for a border print. Now this one, does it have sewn on cuffs? Yes. This one, if I can get it to focus, this one has these little bell cuffs on it. You see that? You could use a border on each cuff. You could use a border on each of these side panels, actually. That would be very narrowing. 
And you could do them in the front and not the back, or you could do them in the front and the back. Sometimes you might want to buy an extra yard of a border fabric. But you could, you know, you can color block this all over the place. And then the border part of your fabric is just another piece of fabric. This one is another fun one. I got one kind of like it that I'm going to use. Now, I don't care for the cover photo on that. I mean, it's fine and it shows real good and hooray for Peggy. That's a good picture. But I wouldn't want the belt with it. I'd like to see what it looks like without the belt. But think of this with the border cut. So the border comes right down here, right there, see? And that is just an extra piece that you sew on the front. I think the border would look great that way. So I don't like that neckline. I'd, I'd have to change the neckline because I don't like high necklines. They choke me. But that's an idea that you could use. But since I've already found a pattern, I'm going to put that one away. Now, here's another one. I started to choose this one. I've made this before. It's a very interesting pattern. The directions are poor. I had to call her and say I don't get the directions. <laughs> so this one is real cute. It wraps around the neck and has lots of gathering up there. Not gathering, but um, uh, drape. Drape. And I love drapey collars, and that would cover up all of the neck issues. And it is, a, you always got to make sure it's a separate piece. It's a separate piece, and so you could cut that on that border and use it for that neckline. I think it would be absolutely darling. Very, very cute. I had problems with this pattern, I remember. And, and she's got this big glob. She's got this big glob right here on the shoulder. How are we supposed to know what's underneath that? How are we supposed to know? <laughs> Now, I'm not sure if that's one garment or two garments, because she's got sleeves on this, but there's no sleeves here and no sleeves here. This has a tie, but it's a different tie. This has a ruffle, but you absolutely could use your border for that ruffle right there. I don't like ruffles around the neck like that because they flip up and show the wrong side all the time. And same thing with the bow. You'd have to be sure that your fabric was the same on both sides, and mine isn't. It's white on one side. So think about that. Now, I've only got about seven inches here. This is not the widest border, although it's wider than some. I've got seven inches. Seven inches is all I have, because you're going to have to fold this edge back. See, like that. So the pattern I found that I'm going to use is Silhouette Patterns 145 St. John's Top. I have never made this one. I hope that when I open the pattern up, it actually has these pieces in it. <laughs> Sometimes they'll show a sleeve on the front, but when you open it up, that's not the sleeve that's inside. I've called her about that too. She said, well, you just need to get the sleeve out of a different pattern. Well, what to buy this pattern for if the sleeve's in a different pattern? Y'all not understand? <laughs> Here's the one that I have chosen out of the box. What I am going to do is I am going to cut that border so it goes right up here, diagonally, right up there. So I will cut out this whole piece, then I will lay it, I'll show you when I do it, I'll lay it on the fabric. Hopefully it will work so the border lines up right there on that edge. Huh? You could use it up here at the top in the cowl. And so the next thing what I'll do is, if I had a mirror and I don't, I would hold this up on me in the way that I'm thinking about doing it. And I don't have the pattern in front of me now. So then the neck part will all be that color and then the border will go this isn't easy to do with no mirror <laughs> the border will go across me let's get the border first so the border will be down like that and then all of the cowling up at the top will be blue does that make sense i mean you can't really do it unless you cut it <laughs> so that will be going down like that on me and it will be like a surprise <laughs> let me get all set up 
and I'll come back. That's this piece that's going to be in the front. Isn't it strange? So I'm going to line it up so that border is over here somehow. <laughs> that border is going to be over here on this edge somehow. Okay? But I've got to have that piece before I can cut it out. So this is part of the front, this is part of the front, this is the back, and this is the sleeve. And this, one thing I love, 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 love about Peggy's patterns is it does have bust sizing. I will spend more time with the paper pattern than it will take me to sew this garment up. I spend a lot of time with the paper. I have the underside. There's a whole top that goes on first. This is it. And this is out of a net. So I've got it pinned together and held it up to me and I'm like, okay, okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty close. I pinned up the dart. I'm using the D dart. Yes, I need the D even though I'm not a D. I don't get that. All patterns are like that. So now I have that front piece cut out that I showed you. That funky front piece. So I'm going to go stand in the mirror. I'm going to make sure that this is, I'm going to pin it, I'm going to pin it to the shoulder of the front and I'm going to pin it in whatever places or a pleat or a tuck or something like that. And then I'm going to hold it up to me and I'm going to make sure that I like the diagonal of it and I'm going to determine how wide do I want the border. The border is seven inches. Maybe I just want three inches. Maybe I just want four inches. Maybe I want all seven inches. I don't know. So, you need to give yourself half a day to play with the paper and have some snacks and drink some coffee, talk to your friends, and just enjoy the paper part. Because when you get the paper part right, sewing the garment together is nothing. Really. All right. I'm going to show you here. I'm going to put my fabric out. Now this might turn out horrible and end up in the trash, but it may turn out wonderful. This is why you have to have lots of fabric. So my border is going to end up covering the shoulder. So it's going to be like from here all the way down to there. How much of the bottom? Yeah, it's kind of... So the border, the border will be right there. That irons off, that's a friction pan. Friction pans are in my Amazon store. Be sure you get the markers, not the pens. The markers, not the pens. Friction colors, markers. They are erasable and iron offable. And once you wash it, they will never ever come back with any kind of shadow or a mark. Okay, so that's where the border is going to be. The rest is going to be the blue. You could put the border all around the bottom. You could put the border to the bottom of the sleeves. and have. I've done that before. You could make the border so it comes up to like here on the sleeves. That's pretty. I did that on one top and every time I wear it, you all notice it. Oh, I love the way you did those sleeves. See, you can do the border like that at the bottom of the sleeves. There's so many things you can do and it's way fun. All it is is color blocking, my friends. That's all it is. So simple, but you don't have to sew it on because it's already printed on. Okay, now you can see it's pinned on Lucy. Now remember, Lucy's bigger than I am. Lucy's still got a 42 inch chest. I've got a 41 inch chest, sometimes a little less than that, depending on the time of the day. Her tummy's bigger, her hips are bigger. And this is a very stretchy, slinky knit. So, this is what it's gonna look like. You can see that the inside blouse front is going to be much higher than the drape. I think I'm gonna cut the inside neckline down a little bit because I don't want it to be up that high. I can't stand anything up around my throat, as you know. And in this pattern, it doesn't look like it's up that high. Of course, we're talking drape again. And here in the drawing in the back, it doesn't even show that. See, I could show you so many mistakes. <laughs> 
So there's a blouse inside the front comes up higher than the drape. So I'm going to lower that a little bit. Look here on Lucy, you can see how this under blouse will come over here and go all the way around the back. It will be a top in itself. And then this is just a drapey piece that goes on top of it. Okay? We shall see how it turns out. I'll be back. I told you I want to drop center front of the t-shirt that's underneath the drape thing. I want to drop center front. So, I took my Peggy Sager's 3 8 inch designing stylus which is clear and it breaks real easy, but <laughs> it's nice to have because she does 3 8 inch seams. So I just lined up the curve to match her curve on the stylus. Then I moved it down. Okay? I moved it down and I drew a red line. I drew a new red line. Then I lined center front up with the straight line on my grid. You want it to be square on your grid because you want to make sure that this part right here is 90 degree angle. Or you're going to end up with a real funny looking front. Okay? So I am moving the front of my blouse down that far. Hopefully it will end up underneath the drape. Now just in case I decide I didn't like that, this is, I don't cut that off. In this instance I don't cut that off because I haven't made this before. And I be, might be I might be totally messing it up. So, in case I want to go back to the original curve, I'm leaving it here. I'm leaving it here. Cut to the curve, and then you can just fold all this extra down. You can fold all that extra down like that. And fold that over right there. So there is my new curve. See, I play with the paper. I play with the paper for hours. <laughs> I really do. Because I usually don't like the way the paper starts out for my body. Now I'm going to use some removable tape. You want removable tape. Now if I like this neckline and everything turns out, I'll come back and I'll cut that curve off. But until I'm for sure, I'm going to do removable tape duty. So, I'm ready to cut it out, except you know what I haven't done yet. Who knows? Raise your hand if you know what I still have to do. Huh? How many times have you taken my class? <laughs> I am never interested in the parts I'm not going to use. I'm only interested in the parts I am going to use. So, I still have two issues. I have to do the back, sizes 1 through 4, sizes 5W through 8. I usually find out I could have used the size 4, but according to her measurements, I shouldn't be able to. Here's the sleeve, which is going to be way too big for me. But I am going to put a smaller sleeve in it. Okay. Here's the sleeve. Let's see how big the sleeve is going to be on me, just for fun, huh? My wrist is five and a half inches. This is a knit, so I don't need the bottom of my sleeve to be over six inches at the most, because then I can pull it up to here. I always like to pull it up, and I'll probably make it three quarters. But let's see how far around. Come in three eighths inch, because you know that's the hem. Three eighths inch over here. Yeah. Eight and five eighths inches is how much the bottom of this sleeve is. Eight and five eighths inches is that big on my wrist. See? So I have to adjust the sleeve and I have to do a round back and a sway back. All right, let's cut out the 5W. What about the length? The length can easily be chopped off later. I don't usually worry about the length of anything. Unless I'm turning it into a dress, of course. And she has a single notch back here for the back, which is... Everybody knows you're supposed to have a double notch. I don't know why she does that. I'm going to make it a double notch. 
find a pin that writes and make a double notch in the back. Otherwise you're not going to be able to, able to tell it from the front when you're putting your sleeve in. The sleeve isn't going to have, I don't know if the sleeve has a notch in the front and the back. Let me see. Her sleeve, look at this, this is Peggy's pattern, y'all. You need to just agree with me. <laughs> this is her pattern. Her sleeve pattern has a double notch in the back for the armhole. Her paper pattern of the back top had only one notch. How on earth are you gonna match up one notch to two notches? See, there's just, there's no quality control. No quality control. If you did not know how to sew already, I don't think you would ever be able to get one of these patterns to work for you. I really don't. Okay, here's the back. This is the back. We're gonna slap down a ruler and we're gonna do the round back. The round back is right there. We're gonna do 3 8 inch seam allowance over here so we know not to cut past that. We're going to cut across to the seam line, jump the seam line, and cut again. Then we are going to open this up and add, and add. I'm going to add a half inch just to be sure. You have to cut really, really close to that seam line without going over it. It's a tad of a trick, Dick. Yes, it is. Okay, now take some paper, put it in the hole you just cut, put it in there, put it in the other way, it's skinnier that way, put it in there. I'm going to add a half inch. I usually, I can add up to one inch, but since I haven't made this before, I'm going to add a half inch, just to be sure. I'm going to use the removable tape in case I need to take it off and make it bigger or littler. Okay, so I'm going to move this down to that one half inch line that I just made. I'm going to use my removable tape again. Now, I have added to the back length up near my neck. Now, I need to do a sway back. A sway back happens above your waist. Now I know my waist is 16 inches down there. So my waist is about right there. I'm gonna come up above my waist and we're gonna cut a sway back. We're gonna cut it right across this line right there. I see a lot of people wearing something they've made. They'll turn around and I'll go, oh, that needs a sway back. That needs a sway back. How do you know if you need a sway back? Two ways, you can tell. Okay, so we've cut to there. We've got to cut a little bit more over to the seam line. You need to know, you need to like to play with paper if you're gonna to learn to fit. Now that just tore, but we don't care. If it tears when you're trying to do these adjustments, just put a piece of tape on it and do it again. You're cutting so close to that seam line that it can very easily come apart. Now on the sway back, I am going to cross it over 5 8 inch because I know that's the magic number for my sway back. So instead of opening it up, I'm going to cross it over. And I'm going to stop at that 5 8 inch mark and I'm going to put some more tape, that's permanent. Removable tape will remove itself when you don't want it to. Okay? So, here I've done my sway back. Here I've done my round back. And I'm going to go check my shoulder slope on my little man that I drew. Then I'll come back. This is Friday morning the next day. I want to show you where another one of Peggy Sager's patterns is. Silhouette patterns. There's another one. I'm telling you, I worked on her pattern almost four hours yesterday. Now, that's not the whole pattern. That's just the rest of the pattern because I don't want to have to deal with it again. So, let's forget about the pattern and let's talk about the border print. This is the piece right here 
that I'm going to put on diagonally and the border print is going to go down that side. So you can see I have that much fabric laying off, I have that much fabric hanging off the table and that's going to be for this piece with the border. That's saved for that, okay? Now, you can see I've got this folded in half because I want the front and the back to just be the plain blue. I have the sleeve, mainly because I don't have enough fabric to do it otherwise, I have the sleeve lined up so part of the border will be at the bottom of the sleeve, both sleeves. I had to totally, totally rearrange the, the sleeve pattern, the armholes, oh my. I highly recommend if you're a beginner seamstress, please don't start with silhouette patterns. They have so many problems. Remember I told you that the sleeve has a double notch here on the back. The pattern that it supposed to match up to, double notch to double notch, there was only a single notch here. I drew the extra notch in the blue. That only had a single notch. The front armhole has a single notch and it's supposed to. Fronts always have a single. Backs always have a double. And here's the front of the sleeve and it has a single. Now I have other Peggy patterns that have no notches on the back so at least she's got a double notch on the sleeve. <laughs> I don't know maybe pretty soon she'll start putting them on the back of the back pattern. And you can see I've got the sway back. I've got the round back. That's all I had to do to the back. And in the front I'm using the D cup and I have lowered the neckline in the front. So I'm getting ready to cut this out, but I want to tell you something first. A lot of you probably remember me doing my sew alongs for the Fit Nice system. The Fit Nice system is Judy Kessinger. SureFit Designs is Glenda Sparling. I know both of those ladies very well, and I love both of their systems. But in my opinion, this is just Joy's opinion. I think the Fit Nice system is much easier for a beginner. Linda says no, she thinks anyone can use hers. But that's my opinion. So you remember, this is Judy Kessinger's book, Fit Nice System, and it's the Design It Yourself workbook. I think it's like $100. Sometimes she has it on sale and she puts her other book with it, both for $99. I don't know what they are right now. But it's a wonderful, wonderful book. It has all kinds of different styles. Her specialty is taking the front and the back and the sleeve and turning it in to hundreds of different designs. You can even do it with somebody else's t-shirt pattern. You don't have to do it with her pattern. And I'm not affiliated with her. I just really like her. She's a fun, fun person. So, I want to tell you, she has these clinics. I think she calls them Fit Nice Clinics. If you go to her website, fitnicesystem.com, and click on the clinics or the, oh, you'll see it up there at the top. I don't remember what it's called. But she has these one-hour Zoom classes. They're one hour long Zoom classes. Actually, the one I took before, was it, what was it on? Was it on dresses? It was on dresses, and it was actually two hours long. But this one was an hour long. And the reason I'm even telling you this is because the class that I went to yesterday was called Rock the Block. Rock the Block. And what she does is she uses border fabrics. Border fabrics to do color blocking with. Fun, fun, fun class. You'll learn all kinds of things. And I'm showing you just this one thing that I'm doing with this particular border pattern. Now, I have had border patterns that I've gotten, and I haven't really liked the border before, and so I just ignored it and didn't use it at all. But I just happen to really like this one. When I cut this piece out, I'm going to flatten the fabric out because you just cut this single. You don't cut two of these. You, you don't cut it on the fold. You just cut one of these. These ITYs are beautiful in cowl necks. Anything that has a lot of drape, ITYs are fabulous for it. Interlock, twist, yarn. In fact, 
Judy was laughing yesterday because uh, I was saying, oh, I just love ITY knits. And she said, oh my gosh, so do I. And I said, oh my gosh, I love the ones with borders. And she said, oh my gosh, so do I. <laughs> oh, and look what I did on the back. I think I showed you that in one of the clips. How I colored the little line drawing there. I can heat that with an iron and it'll go away. But that's what I'm doing with the border in this instance. So I will line this edge right here up with that border. All right, I'm gonna cut it out and I'm gonna sew it together and then I'll come back and show it to you. It may be a complete total flop. I've never made this pattern before. It's given me major, major <laughs> issues with her pattern. But anyway, <laughs> I'm still gonna make it. I've made so many things that I'm able to kind of fix it so it will work for me, even though mm, it has its issues. I'll be back when I get it together. I want to show you <laughs> how I determined how much of the border to use. Now this border is eight inches wide. If I use the entire border on this overlap piece, it would come all the way halfway across this piece. See, it would come all the way to the middle of this piece. It kind of looks like it does right there. But I decided, and I have no clue if this is a rule or not a rule, it's just what I decided. I decided to measure across the bottom. It's 16 inches, so I played like that meant 15 inches. <laughs> <laughs> and I decided to take one-third of the distance, one-third of the distance, and make that have the border on it. And it just, it just goes a little bit past the shoulder up here at the top of it, okay? Because I've heard that odd numbers are good and thirds are good, and you don't want this going all the way over to your belly. Well, I don't want it going all the way over to my belly. I've got enough, enough stress trying to keep that hidden as it is. <laughs> Okay, so that's how I determined. So I decided to use five inches of this eight inch border. Now how did I decide how much to use on my sleeves? I used what I had to use because that's all of the fabric I had. And I didn't have any choice on the sleeves. So if it turns out looking bad on the sleeves, I'll cut the border off and make short sleeves or cap sleeves or something. You can always change the sleeve. But see, the fabric's laying here flat, and the pattern is one piece, and I'm laying it out just how I want it to be on this border. I'm going to cut it out. I'll be back. It's not completely done. I've got to hem this inside blouse, and I've got to hem this inside neck. But it's done enough that you can see how I used the borders. My pants are too big, as all my pants are, so <laughs> it's making the blouse a little fitted. But see, I've got, the, I've got the border here, and here, and here. Huh? What do you think? What do you think? Now, I've already shown you what pattern this is. But unless you are an experienced sewist, and you have made lots of blouses, and you can make one without instructions, I would highly not recommend this pattern because the instructions are extremely hard to understand. The pictures, one of the things I often find with her is the pictures don't match the writing instructions. It's very, very, very confusing. If you do use one, I suggest you baste everything first because then when you go to do the next step, you're going to say, oh, this isn't right, it won't fit to this down. And then you go back and you read and you read and you read and you read. Silhouette patterns. I love Peggy. I love her styles. But her patterns need to be quality control tested. All right. This is what I did with my border. What are you going to do with yours? I've got to go. The guys are home. I've got to put my groceries away. Then I'm going to go sit out on the patio in my new lawn chair and get some rays. I'll be back soon.